Hello and welcome to 7XL Time Hacks. My name's Jeff, I'm glad you're here. Let's just jump right in. Now, Excel is a big place and I learn stuff about it all the time. And this is a collection of seven time-saving hacks about Excel that I've learned over the years. Now, Microsoft Excel Hack 7 is a power hack that combines several of the previous hacks. So definitely stick around and check it out to save a lot of time with Microsoft Excel. So I hope these seven things are gonna help you get your work done faster. Let's begin. Okay, the first time hack is flash fill. So let's go ahead and jump into Excel. So basically here's the thing. Let's say we have a column of values and maybe it's um, comprised of this format of department, class, and account separated by a colon. And we wanna pull out, let's say the class, right? So this middle number. So one way we can do is with flash fill. And with flash fill, we give it a sample and it's gonna to try to detect a pattern and fill that pattern down. So once we type in our sample value, we click data and flash fill. And let's see if it worked, 10, 100, 4, 100, 4, 100. It looks like it got it, okay? So once again, we give it the first one and we just flash fill it down, okay, cool? All right, cool. Now, what if we wanted, on the other hand, the department or the first three characters here? Well, we give it the first one and flash fill it down, cool. And what if we wanted the account, once again, 90, flash fill it down and we got it. Now, what if we wanted to pull out the numeric part of this transaction ID? Well, is that gonna work? I have no idea, let's try it out. 2232, enter and flash fill it down and yes, we got it. Okay, cool. So that's a warm up for flash fill. In addition to sort of extracting values from columns, we can also split a single column into multiple columns. So it's just the same basic process. We give it the first sample and just flash fill it down. For the last name, we give it the sample and flash fill it down, okay? Easy, all right. Can we do more with flash fill? Yes, let's go to the next one. In addition to splitting columns, we can combine columns. So what we do is we just give it the pattern and flash fill it down, okay? Cool, all right, good. Is there more? Yeah, there's more. Let's check this one out. Can we do it with dates? Yeah, we can do it with dates. So this is US format. So this is month, day, year. So let's type in one and let's say we want the day value, right? We want the day value. So it's like, hmm, is Excel gonna know that I want the, the day value or is it gonna try to extend the month down? I don't know, let's find out. Flash fill it down and okay. So it looks like it's giving us the month and that is not what we want. So what are we supposed to do? Well, hmm, what if we give it more information? What if we give it a second sample? So let's type in one, two, and then let's flash fill that down. Yes, that worked. So in the event that flash fill is confused, we can give it additional samples. Hopefully you can lock onto that pattern and fill it down. Okay, cool. So that's hack number one, flash fill. All right, let's go to the second time hack, filling formulas. In addition to filling patterns of values down, we can also ask Excel to fill a formula down. So let's write a sample formula. We'll go amount plus tax plus shipping. Okay, and now if we want Excel to extend this formula down, there's lots of different ways to do this, of course. We could copy paste and all these other things, but a pretty quick way to do it is just to double click the fill handle. The fill handle is this square in the lower right corner of the formula cell. So you activate the formula cell, you hover over the fill handle and you double click <laughs> and Excel fills it down. And basically what it does is it looks to the adjacent column and it knows basically where to stop, okay? So once again, you simply write the formula, select the formula cell, double click the lower right corner and got it. Cool, all right, that's hack number two. Time for hack three, alt equals. So the alt equals keyboard shortcut is fairly common. So you might be familiar with it already, but if not, I do wanna let you know that we can do um, some pretty cool things with alt equals. So the basic use is to do a foot. And that's just a term which means I'm adding values in like the vertical column. So we select an Excel, we hit alt equals and Excel looks up, it guesses the correct range. It includes that range in a sum function. You can hit enter and got it. Okay, so we can do these one at a time with alt equals, that's fine. Um, but what we can also do is select multiple cells. So if I'd like to do all of these cells at once rather than one at a time, we select the cells and alt equals and got it. 
Okay, so that is footing or adding a vertical column. Can we do a cross foot? What's that? That's just adding like horizontally. So what if I wanted to add this? Well, again, Alt equals and got it. I could again do those one at a time, or I can also select all the rows that I want and Alt equals and got it. Okay, so we can foot and we can cross foot. But what we can also do is do all of that at once. So check this out, rather than doing them one at a time or rather than doing all my foot and cross foot one at a time, I can select all of this and then I can extend it a row, extend it a column and then Alt equals and got it. <laughs> okay, this is fun. I hope you're having fun, I'm having a great time. Now um, let's go to this next one. Um, here we want to foot these quarters we want to cross foot all this stuff for year one. We want to do the same thing for year two. And then we also want to get a combined grand total. So let's grab all of this stuff, extend a row, extend a column, Alt equals, got it. Let's grab all this stuff, Alt equals, got it. And then what about this? Hmm, can we do that? I don't know, let's find out. What if we grabbed all of this stuff? I'm a little worried because I'm afraid that if I hit Alt equals, it's going to add up all of these values, but let's see what happens. Alt equals and, okay, let's see what it is here. Okay, it knew just to pick up the sums or the totals. <laughs> okay, pretty cool. So let's do that one one more time. That was pretty fun to clear all this stuff out. What we do is grab all this stuff, Alt equals, grab all of this stuff, Alt equals, and grab all of this stuff and Alt equals, okay? So you can hopefully see the thread of this stuff, which is there is a way to do it, which is um, kind of a manual or traditional way. And then with some Excel knowledge, we can get it done the fast way. So this is hack number three, alt equals. Time for hack four, fill series. Let's say we wanted to fill a series. A series is like, you know, one, two, three, four, five. So if I use the fill handle and pull it down, it's going to repeat the value. If, however, I hold down the control key, and then click and drag, that's going to fill a series down. Um, there are other options for this as well. So if I, if I gave it a one and a two, and then selected both of those, and then extended it, that's gonna detect the pattern and fill it down. We could even do like um, odd numbers. Let's go with one and three, grab that, fill series down, and got it. Now let's go to filling series with dates. What we can do is if we click and drag, it's going to fill by days, and that's cool. Um, if we do a control, it's just gonna repeat. Okay, so that's fine. But then what we can do is actually right click and drag. So if I right click and drag down, then I'm gonna get a little pop-up that says, how do I wanna fill this down? And I could say by days, that'd be fine. Um, or if I right click and drag and release, I can say by months. So we can do that by months, or I can right click and fill down and say by years. So we get some choices when it comes to filling down when we use the right click uh, instead of the left click. Okay, cool. All right, another little thing we can do here is if I right click, fill down and select months, um, then what I can do is if I want to move this around. So you may already know that on a selected range, I can just left click and drag to move these values to any other area that I want, no big deal. But if I right click and move, then I get some secret options. So if I right click and move and release, I can say, you know, move this here. That's fine, let me undo. I can right click and drag and I can say copy here. Okay, that's fine. Um, and then I can also right click and drag and say, um, copy here as values. So that would be nice if these were formulas and I wanted to replace them with their values, then I could right click over and back and say, um, copy here as values only. So a couple of different cool things for right clicking and dragging as well. And then let's go to exercise three. What if I have Q1? and I want to fill that series down. If I just left click and drag, then it extends this quarter. So it recognizes this as quarters and then it fills it down. Okay, what if I have though Q1 2030? What happens if I fill that down? Now it increments the year instead of looping through each of the quarters and then incrementing the year. So, hmm. What am I supposed to do here? Well, Bill Jellin also taught me this. If we do 1Q 2030 instead of Q1, 
Then when I left click and fill this down, Excel for whatever reason has been programmed to loop through the four quarters and then increment the year. So that's just an interesting trick. So normally I would think of going Q1 2030. If I do that, it just extends the years. If however, I go 1Q 2030 and then drag that down, now all of a sudden I get you know, each quarter in turn. Now what if I have this and I wanna move it over to column headers? No problem. I can do a standard control C copy and then up here I can do a paste and then I can select transpose. And now I've got that. And then the other question is, what happens if I get this, but I really want it to look like this, Q1 2030. Can I do that? Hmm, I don't know. Is there anything in Excel that can extend a pattern down? Hmm. If you said flash fill, hey, good for you. We just go to data and flash fill it down and now we got it. Now we can grab this, do a copy, and if we wanted to, we could simply transpose, okay? Cool, so that's some fun with filling series. Time for hack five, filters. All right, let's say we have a range of data and we want to apply some type of filter. Well, one way to do it is to do each separate command sort of one at a time. And the commands would be something like I select, you know, any cell in this range, then I go to data, then I select the filter command, and that toggles on or off these filter dropdowns. And then I select a dropdown, and then I like pick the one I want, and then I click OK, right? So that would be one way to do it. Now let me undo that, and let's talk about another way to do it. Another way to do it, and let me turn off the filter, another way to do it is to do all of those things in one step. So what that looks like is right-clicking on the value that you want to filter by, and then select filter, and then select by selected cells value. You can also filter by color, font color, or icon. In this case, we just want the value and then we select that, and now all three of those individual steps are applied at once. In other words, um, the filter is turned on, the value selected, and the filter is applied. Now, we talked about alt equals earlier in this video. So what I wanna do is I wanna remove all these filters, and I wanna talk about alt equals. If I select these cells here and I hit alt equals, as expected, we get the sum function. That's what we already talked about. So I wanna talk about the sum function for a second. Currently, we're gonna make a mental note of the amount total, which is 7202, 7202, 7202, 7202. And let me just go ahead and apply a filter, and let's just take off these, and then click OK. And what we get is still 7202. So what does that tell us? That tells us that the sum function includes all the rows within the sum range regardless of if they are hidden or not, okay? So now I wanna undo all that stuff, okay? And now let's go ahead and apply the filter. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna select filter, filter by selected cells value, and now with the range filtered, let's hit Alt equals. Alt equals, and this is interesting. Now we're getting what appears to be a subtotal of just the visible cells, and that's exactly what we're getting. Excel uses the subtotal function instead of the sum function. In other words, when there is no filter, and we hit Alt equals, we get the sum function. When the range is filtered, and we hit Alt equals, we get the subtotal function. And the reason why is because the subtotal function has exclusion rules, and one of the exclusion rules is that it excludes rows that have been hidden by a filter. This means we're able to see just the values that have been selected. So if we cruise over here and select something else, we see that we're gonna get just the subtotal for the visible rows, okay? Cool? All right, let's go to the next one. Now, what if we want to view the sum of just the yellow highlighted rows, okay? And this is how I like to teach. I like to show individual components and then show how we can use them all together. So we've already talked about the details for how to accomplish this. Step one is right click, filter by selected cells color. Step two, alt equals and got it, okay? Cool, all right, let's go to the next hack. Hack six, data subtotal. Now in the previous segment, what we talked about was a way to get the subtotal for any 
rep or any region or any item. And if you recall, what we would basically do is right click, filter, filter by selected sales value, grab the cell here and alt equals, and then we get a subtotal, okay? But what if we actually wanted a subtotal for each, let's say, region? So this isn't just one subtotal at a time, I wanna see all of the subtotals for region. So to do this, the first step is to sort by the column that you want the subtotals grouped by. In this case, it's region. I could also do it for rep or item. In this case, it's region. So I'm gonna select any cell in the region column and I'm gonna A to Z sort. So now I've got this sorted by the thing or by the column that I wanna add the subtotals to. Then I go to data, outline, subtotal. In the resulting subtotal dialog box, I would say at each change in the column region, use the function sum, and there's different options, so depending on what you're working on, check them out. Add a subtotal to which column, the amount column, and I wanna replace any subtotals if there are any. I could also place a, a page break between them, and I do want the summary below the data. Depending on your work, what you're working on, check out these different options. Then I click OK, and now I've got it. I can see that Excel has inserted subtotals for each region. It's using the subtotal function, and it's also providing a grand total. The other thing that's really cool is it automatically adds outline groups. And if you've never seen outline groups, they're a way to quickly toggle on or off the display of selected rows. So I could choose these buttons one at a time and you know, show or hide the detail that I want. And this would be nice if I wanted to send out a report like this, but I wanted to provide you know, management with a way to drill into um, a specific region really easily. They can use these. Um, or instead of doing them one at a time, I can also use these buttons one, two, three. So three would be the lowest level of detail, two would be the next level, and one would be the next level. So that is an automatic way to apply subtotals with an outline group. Now, here's a question. What if I actually wanted to sort this descending by amount? And remember, I'm not just sorting based on the subtotals. Each subtotal is calculated by all of these individual transactions. So I would think that if I were to change the sort order here, like A to Z or Z to A, that it's somehow gonna mess everything up because I don't think Excel is gonna to know to actually physically move all of the related or grouped transactions. So, I don't know, let's see what happens. Let's select this cell here and hit Z to A and, huh, interesting. It seemed to have worked, but is it just moving the subtotal rows? I don't know, let's find out. Let's check it out and no, actually it's reorganizing all of the data and moving all of the individual transactions so that when I de uh, sort descending, it's moving all the transactions as well. Okay, cool. All right, let's move on to the next hack. Hack seven, auto outline. We really like that data group and the auto outlines that were created in the last segment, but can we create those like manually? Right, and so what if our report looks like this instead of just a range of, of data transactions? So let's go ahead and add this total current assets. Um, is there a fast way to do that? If you said alt equals, hey, good for you. Let's cruise down here, alt equals and alt equals, and let's grab all of this stuff and alt equals. Okay, cool. All right, now, what if I wanted to create this sort of hierarchy with the buttons? Can I do that? Yeah, one way is to manually select all of these and then go to outline group. And then I can create these, you know, one at a time. I could go in here. I could select all these and outline and do it all manually. And that'd be fine. But there's a faster way to do it. Let me just undo this stuff here. There we go. There's a faster way to do it. What we do is we just go to outline and select group and then auto outline. And when we select that, Excel detects the hierarchy based on these formula values, and it understands there's this hierarchy here. So it automatically creates the outline groups, where three is the lowest level of detail, two is one up, and then one is the grand total, okay? So that is um, outline groups with an auto outline. Let's go to this one. 
Now, in this last one, I want to kind of see if you've been paying attention. So I'm going to ask you to think through all the different hacks that we talked about and see if you can apply them to accomplish this objective. We want to double space this. We want to double space this range. So of course, one way is to manually go through and insert, you know, five or six new rows. But what we can also do is use some of the things that we learned. We talked about filling a series, didn't we? So we can hit one, we can hit control, drag that down. We can also right click, extend this here and say copy. Okay, and then we can also use A to Z to sort. And then we can remove this and we got it. Okay, so once again, that's just an illustration of how to combine all these different little hacks that we talked about to accomplish a given objective. Now, in addition to providing Excel tips on my YouTube channel, I also offer formal structured courses, which include on demand videos as well as live office hours with me on Zoom. So if you'd like to learn more about that, I'd love to have you. Feel free to check out the link in the description below. Due to Excel University, I can trust the work that I do. I can trust my worksheets and my team members can utilize them as well. The fact that I can contact Jeff and say, hey, you know, what about this? What about that? That's priceless to me. Thanks to Excel University, you kind of saved me, you know, sort of two days worth of work. It takes minutes compared to hours. Projects that were taking me 45 minutes down to five or six. Rather than usually a week long process, now it's at most maybe a couple of hours. You don't know what you don't know. Oh wait, I can do it with that keystroke instead. I never would have known that without Excel University. I think Excel University has been incredible. He makes it very simple to understand. He makes it easy to follow. Everything's just there and ready for me. It's very cool. I really like the fact that I can see that we're making improvements and I can see things that I can that I can show other people how to do. Excel University. Excel University. Excel University. There's something there for everyone from the beginning, you know, first time user, even to you know, more advanced users. It's a pleasure to learn and understand it and actually get it. It has made me so confident in my Excel skills. Everything I learned was almost immediately applicable to the work that I do and helped me to save time on a lot of things. I needed to get a quick knowledge of Excel, so Excel University was the perfect way to do that. This video is a production of Excel University. 